Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg and we're making hard candy in this case. We're bringing back the memories of this candy here, Altoids Sour. And today we're going to talk about the acid coverage. We're going to talk about break, breaking bars and the uh, panning machine. And we're going to talk about the success that we had. But first, we're going to talk about your designs because we had a label contest. We did a contest to see, have people submit packaging ideas, sticker ideas for the labels that are gonna go on the cans we're gonna make. And of course, we want the cans not to resemble the originals because these aren't the original candies. These are us trying to capture your memories of the original candies back into candies, and I think we're doing a really good job. So what you're gonna find is in the description of this video down below, you're gonna find a link to a questionnaire. The questionnaire is gonna have the final 12 images. We're also gonna have a link to every image that was entered, and that was over 60 images. Guys, this is amazing. I am just so blown away by this. So the final 12 are going to go up for a vote by you. And we still have veto power, but we're probably going to take the one you vote for. And we'll have a couple of questions. We're going to take advantage of this. And you'll have the option of adding your email address if you want to get a note to be one of the first people to be able to order this candy when it does become available. We figure we have at least a week of production or two or three weeks to get packaging made and a few things like that. So we're probably at least three or four weeks out. But today's project was a real success. Now, I promise we'll be making candy. Actually, we made a lot of candy for this, just not candy that's being sold. Uh, we've been producing quite a bit of the tangerine centers for testing and destroying them quite nicely. Some of them have different levels of acid in it that we don't like or we do like, and we've been experimenting with that. And we've been putting it through this 1870s candy press of ours with our raspberry rollers. This is the same rollers we use for our forbidden fruit and our blackberry and our raspberry candy that's in our berry assortment. So it's a roller we use quite a bit, but it's the same shape, but only bigger than the original ones. Now I tried to call my friends that have machines to see if anyone had a tiny version of this, at least so I could borrow for a short run, but no, they didn't, unfortunately. But I gotta also thank you for things. So the, we had a bunch of problems. One of the problems is, you know, the candy, the candy tumbler, the panning machine broke. We got that fixed, it's working great with heavy weight. The next thing we had trouble with is just at mixing. Now, Inside, you, there are things called breaker bars, which some candy makers use, and it actually seems to be very rare. Most panning machines don't even come with them as an option. And I discovered later that's because most panning machines are used for chocolate. And if you're using chocolate or a liquid surface on the candy, you don't need to worry about that. And ours was just sliding around, and that didn't do any good. So as an experiment, I grabbed some uh, plastic hose, this is actually food safe hose, and some tape, and I taped on two strips of hose to see how it would work. And it worked great. The candy tumbled spectacularly, and I took the advantage to put a few pinches of canuber wax in. Now I tracked down powdered canuber wax because you, some of you, and quite a few actually, I guess I should watch how it's made, uh, wrote in in the comments in the last video that wax is applied dry and it tumbles and sticks on. And this almost makes sense because when you wax your car, you're rubbing it in, you're not heating it up. Now this wax is supposed to be the hardest wax around, but I guess if it hammers enough onto the surface, it sticks to the candy and then the acid sticks to it. Look at that. That looks, that looks great. I got the coating on it. I got the acid on it. The wax seems to have done it. And it's all because you guys gave me some suggestions online. This is amazing. And this is our first batch that's acid covered. Now this isn't going up for sale because those rubber tubes may be food safe, but the tape may not. So we're gonna have some metal bars fabricated to go in there. Also within a few minutes of them going in, the tape pulled free. I used a type of tape that's specifically supposed to leave no residue. So um, it didn't adhere as well as I thought it should, but it's ending up being a good coating. And the people here who have tried the candy before say we've got it close to dead on. I still have to work on the middle. Believe it or not, I put too much acid into the center. So we're gonna do another round of uh, samples out to our podcast viewers who asked for them. And we're hoping to get those out as soon as possible. We gotta make some more candy. And unfortunately, there's a hurricane on the way here. And we can't make candy when there's a hurricane. So next week, I'm hoping the video to go back in time and use some old footage that I've never shown of another trip that I took besides the circus video. 
Down on the bottom, remember, there is a link to the questionnaire about designs. If you have any other memories about this candy, please put it in the description. I'm still not sure when it's going to be shipping. I'm figuring at least a month. We haven't sent the art to the label makers, and they take two weeks. So we're going to do this vote first for a few days, maybe a week, and then we're going to have to get the labels made. So I see us being at least three weeks out before we start production, and that's obviously before we can ship. But we're left with another question. Stephanie T was nice enough, she's one of our tasters, to videotape herself doing the tasting of our first two batches. These are just the centers of the candy, not the outside. So I'm having her taste part of the candy because I hadn't figured out the outside. I thought that the malic acid went on the inside and then I heard her speak. All right, so I'm gonna start off with number one and see what that tastes like. They're a lot bigger than I remember the originals being. But here I go. Oh, the initial taste is really close. Um, it definitely has that tangerine flavor I remember. Like the flavor that it had once the the coating wore down. Um, I remember as a kid I really didn't like sour candy, so a lot of times I would put sour candies in water and rinse away the coating basically and then eat the non-sour part. And I remember doing that a lot to the Altoids. So this definitely really has that taste of what they tasted like after the coating went away. Okay, so now I'm gonna try the second one. Um, the first one seemed very close, like to what the inner part of them tasted like. So let's see how the second ones go. Oh, this one's sour. -er. More sour? Whatever the word is. Oh. Okay, so the second one reminds me a lot more of what they initially were like when they did have the sour coating on. It was that like almost painful, like barely could tolerate it sour. And then it went away into like what the first one tasted like. And this one still has that flavoring of the second one. Or no. This one still tastes like like even as I wear it down, the sourness is still persisting, which I could see some people liking, but it doesn't taste like the originals. <laughs> see, it's still sour. Uh, and my tongue is orange like it used to sound like when I was a kid. I have learned so much. First of all, this tells me that the malic acid is on the outside. The fact that the flavor stayed in your mouth longer is one of the traits of malic acid. Citric acid is a bigger, is a smaller pow, a faster pow, but doesn't last as long. She also mentioned the inside is sweeter than the outside, and that's something I heard from a lot of you in the comments. The inside wasn't tremendous. It was the acid on the outside, and I can tell this because you guys talked about how the sour stayed after you finished the piece of candy, and that's the malic acid staying in your mouth. So I was completely wrong about how the acids worked, but you guys set me right. Malic acid on the outside, citric acid on the inside. And we ended up making this successfully on the machine. I learned that we need breaker bars. I learned that we need um, to use powdered uh, wax. And I've learned that you guys are amazing artists. So please go down, vote, fill out the rest of the questionnaire if you want to. I'm interested in getting just some basic data from you guys. And there's an email on there that you can put your email on the questionnaire optionally. Uh, and that will tell us, uh, let you get a notice if or when we get this out, because we're really close right now. So what's next? Next is to actually make the candy. We're going to be making several versions with different levels of acid, and we're going to send it out to our beta testers. 
or I guess beta tasters in this case. Our beta tasters are our people who listen to our podcast who volunteered to be beta tasters, and we're going to need to get their feedback. So we're going to be sending out candy to them, and we're also going to be working on getting those breaker bars. That's the things inside the mixer that sort of turn it into resembling your dryer to help with the tumbling. My machinist is going to start work on them tomorrow. So we should have a machine working in about a week or less, and we should have labels decided because you're going to vote on them, right? Look at the description for the uh, link, and we should have those ready in about two weeks. So I think we're about three to four weeks pretty comfortably away from releasing these. But if you're interested, you can check out our candy at www.pd.net that we're shipping now. We're running about five or ten days behind, and I guarantee when this comes out, we're going to run a whole lot more behind. So thank you so much for your input. I gotta say, I couldn't have done this without doing a video and getting your feedback. This has been a very strange but very positive, um, very positive experience. So follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. You know to ring the bell. Everyone else tells you to do it. I might as well. Support us on Patreon because they're the people who've helped us make this happen. And it also helps us produce the podcast. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.